Ah, uh, dang it. There's just so much happening in these flipping chapters. I just finished, cha what chapter am I on? Chapter 15, just finished that one. Holy crap. So chapter 14 was awesome. Chapter 15 was awesome. But there's so much happening. Um, just so much context on the world that, you know, I could slow down and kind of talk my way through this in the same way that these kind of read-alongs and things do, and I'd like to do that. But right now I'm kind of just on surfing kind of along, <laughs> going for the ride and having so much fun with it. But man, there's just so much. There's just so much that I'm trying to kind of hold on to and enjoy as it goes past. But it's just so much. Uh, apparently, Unidas has a kid. And uh, apparently, Kettle has Forkful of Sail in her. Apparently, maybe the first Empire Emperor was a divers or something. And, uh, man, there's just so much happening. We're in this war, and this is just turning into like super major high fantasy stuff. At first I said, you know, this one is the most relatable of the five books. And it, in a way it was, but now it's just kind of ramping up into, into super magic and all these different realms and holds and warrens. And I will say that I do really love it. I do love it, but as far as a content channel, trying to explain that stuff, I can't do it. I can't. Uh, maybe on a reread. Uh, but I am not a natural fantasy reader. So a lot of those details and just the web of, of connections, um, I can't do. I can't do that at this moment. And, and nor do I think you expect me to. But <sighs> super complex. Do the things like the, you know, I'm super into the holds. I'm super into uh, the thing that I love the most, almost, in this book is the stuff that has to do with the Sita and the tiles and uh, kind of the sequence of events that are happening through. I mean, I loved, I liked that through Gardens of the Moon all the way to here, but in this one especially, seeing the things as they kind of play out uh, it has been super awesome, super awesome. Uh, same with learning things from the Feather Witch about the holds. Uh, but also what I am a little bit confused about is, you know, this sword, is it the, everyone's waking up. Kettle's getting a heartbeat. Roulette is alive. People are waking up. I mean, has this always been happening? I mean, people have been coming back and then they've been a part of other people in spirit and things, but it sounds like people who were just dead are waking up. And like these heads that, didn't, that don't die. Is this kind of a new thing, newish, because of this thing that the crippled god just did? Or is this something that's been going on for a long time? Anyway, that's just me thinking out loud. Freaking awesome series. I'm still waiting for Bone Hunters and I think whatever the next one was to come in the mail. It's been like three weeks, four weeks. So it's a good thing I didn't burn through this, but I'm starting to. I said I wasn't going to have any time this week, uh, but at nighttime, I burned through a chapter and a half yesterday and a, a chapter the day before uh, when the kids were in bed uh, instead of marking it I put my highlighter down and I just I just forged on so 
In that way as well, if I did these recap videos with book in hand, I don't know how well it would go because I am just tearing through this right now. I know we say to just slow down and uh, savor it, but sometimes you just want to see what's coming next. And I just want to see what's coming next. Um, I'm still blown away with the prologue and the epilogue in House of Chains and trying to figure out where, where those connections are going to be made. I'm trying to figure out who the heck was dragged up in Memories of Ice. The, they found an e that seemed to have committed suicide, potentially. I'm trying to figure out which of these Sengar, potentially, that could be. Or, or someone else. Just so many connections. And when I'm, those are the connections I'm trying to make, but I'm also fascinated on all these, in all these other ones that I know I'm not making properly. Like the frickin' Feather Witch. Um, was the one that summoned the Wivel. And then Udinus took it, or whatever. Uh, these Lethers and their connection with the First Throne. People know about the Talani Mass. In the Edur, uh, in the Edur kind of traditions or, you know, like the folklore, it's almost like, it seems like Icarium maybe has been cited several times, I think. Um, it's almost, almost like their Sasquatch. Uh, just over generations, every so often, he'll just kind of show up. I think it's talking about that. There's just so many flipping things in this series. I cannot wait for a second uh, read through of this. I don't know when that's going to happen, but it could happen earlier than later. Or sooner than later, I guess I should say. Uh, this is getting very high fantasy. Which is good, because that's something I'm not familiar with. But also, it's becoming very demanding. Uh, which is fine, but as a content channel, trying to make content on this stuff. Like, my whiteboard would just be a mess. Uh, it would just be a mess for this book. It would be a mess for every book, but... Uh, there's just so many connections that I do not understand. Yeah. So there's my ramble for today. About chapter 14 and 15, I guess. Man. I'll talk to you later.